Coming up on November the 21st, it's going to be Shamrock FC Ambush from the Ameristar Casino in Kansas City, Missouri. We're joined by one of the men that's going to be on the card, and he's making his pro debut as Kevin Wolkamp is going to be taking on James Evans. Kevin, appreciate the time, 9-5 and five as an amateur. So uh, was it just kind of one of those things of, hey, it's, it's time to uh, make the jump to be a professional? Yeah, you know, I kind of talked to my wife, and we decided that if somebody's going to beat on my head, I need to make money doing it. You know, it gets kind of old getting beat on your head for free. And, of course, uh, yeah, this coming up here, for for fans who have never seen you fight, you know, maybe they haven't seen your, your matchups on YouTube, or, or maybe they're not, uh, you know, from, from your area. How would you describe yourself as a fighter? Uh, you know, I try to evolve, but the truth is, uh, you know, every fight could be different. My strategy majority of the time i like ground and pound you know I, i'm a jiu-jitsu guy i'm a blue belt under steve crawford through the american jiu-jitsu system so you know that's where i feel comfortable whether it be on my back or you know on somebody else's back it really doesn't matter but uh you know this fight i would like to show the evolution of who kevin wall camp is the workhorse and i really want to try to showcase some of the stand-up skills that i also possess do you kind of feel like people just uh, view you as a jiu-jitsu guy and they don't understand what you can do in the stand-up aspect of the game? 100%, yeah. You know, and, I, and I've got you know, quite a few knockouts, a couple of PKOs, um, but the reality is I think it's because of my comfort zone. You know, going to the ground, it's just something that I think most people are planning for. My last fight here, July 11th, uh, when I fought Dustin Candler, you know, he had come off of a head kick knockout, and for a heavyweight, that's pretty impressive, especially at the amateur level. And so, you know, I was expecting this to be something where finally we get to bang it out. You know, we're going to trade leather and just exchange blows. But then the guy shot in on me, and then I controlled the ground. And then the second round, we came out, overhand right, rocked him, and then went to the ground. So just, you know, like I said, I have a strategy going in, but then you've got to be able to adapt as the fight goes on. How do you make sure you get yourself out of your own comfort zone? Uh, you know, it's training. That that specific fight back on July 11th, um, I can remember one practice where we went 15 rounds straight um, with your traditional one-minute round in between of re- or one-minute uh, rest period. You know, I just told the guys, I said, look, you're not helping me if you're not trying to make me better, so go hard. And, you know, the good thing is being one of the owners at Brickhouse Fitness and MMA, we've got good, hard-nosed, strong-willed fighters and they understand the principle of team. So those guys really help to push me. And then, you know, the occasions when I get to go up to my coach's gym, those guys are the same way. You know, they know they're not helping me if they're not pushing me in practice. So that helps out a lot. Did you end up where it was, uh, where you just trained jiu-jitsu and you fell into MMA, or were you doing MMA training and you fell in love with jiu-jitsu? You know, to be honest, uh, I was 33 years old, um, weighed about 302 pounds, and, you know, I'm only 5'10 with shoes on, so I'm a, I'm a little smurf-looking guy. And uh, when I got in there, it was basically just to try to get back into shape, and I wanted to do something beyond just lifting weights. I'd always lifted weights when I was younger. Um, got tied up with uh, Title when Title still had an MMA section out in Leewood, Kansas. That closed down, and that's how I met Steve Crawford. Got involved basically just to train, try to get back into shape, do something a little unconventional. Um, and then I just kind of looked around. I'm like, man, all these guys are competing. And, you know, of course, they're all, you know, early 20s to the, I think the oldest guy at the time was his mid 20s. And here I am, you know, mid 30s thinking, damn, you know, I, I think I'm past my, my age of being able to compete. Well, that was until I started to learn. And as I learned, I began to flourish. I fell in love with jujitsu. And then before too long, I'm like, man, I want to do MMA. I'm, I've been in street fights before. And obviously, I respect the uh, controlled environment much more than I do a street fight. So I initially came into it with a chip on my shoulder thinking, I'm just going to go in here and you know wreck everybody I come in contact with because that's how it was out in a street fight. But lo and behold, after a couple of losses, you realize real quick, these guys are actually trained competitors. So that's kind of the avenue that I took, and that's how I fell in love with it. I know guys always say you you learn way way more in your fights and your losses than your wins, but uh, you know, what's the biggest things you, you learn in your wins and losses that have made you the fighter you currently are? Uh, to be honest, for me, I took a little bit of a different approach. Being that I was older, I didn't really turn down any fights. Um, if you look back at my fights, the guys that I, were, that I was accepting fights from, they were undefeated. They were title holders. Um, I've never you know, lost a fight to a bum. Just, that's just not that's the reality. Um, I kind of had this issue where 
as my as an amateur, I figured I'm going to compete against the very best guys because I've got nothing to lose. I'm already older, so the clock's ticking. Um, I've got to get in here and get things rolling fast. And so in the losses, the one thing I did learn, um, you know, was I've got to be able to go out there and you've got to be ready to adapt at any given moment. I mean, you may have been having a six to eight week training camp planning for one specific style of competition, but then you get in that fight and the cage door locks, this guy comes out and maybe he evolved since his last fight. And so you've got to be able to stay up top or you've got to be able to go to the ground. You've got to be able to wrestle a little bit. I mean, it, it could go anywhere. So, you know, that's kind of how I get prepared through these losses was I, when I went back and I looked at myself and said, okay, I, I need to pick this apart and fix this. And that's what I've done. In preparation for, and not just this fight, but but any fight overall, is it always more about uh, concentrating on what you need to do as opposed to what your opponents are going to do, or is it is it fifty fifty where you know you're working on what you you want to do in the fight, but also you're you're thinking about okay, my opponent does this well, I need to be looking out for that, and here's where I I don't think he's very good at. Um, for me. The mentality I've taken here, actually, this has been in the last year. It's changed. Um, I want to be the guy that my opponent has to watch film on. I'm not going to sit here and study what this guy's good at and what he's not good at. If if I watch a video, usually within that first round, I'm going to know what somebody's got. I'm going to know what their weapons are. I'm going to know you know where their strong points and weak points are. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, studying what my opponents do. Like I said, I... I want to be, as time goes on and I evolve, I, I still feel like, you know, being a fighter at the age that I am, I still have a lot of years ahead of me, man. I didn't get beat on when I was young. And so that's all being saved for now. And I feel like as time goes on, there's going to be fighters out there like, damn, I, I better make sure that I'm I'm studying who Kevin Waltkamp is as a fighter because that guy's a workhorse, man. He just, he's a grinder. He doesn't stop. He's not going to tap. He's not, you know, it's not going to be an easy day at the office with him. And so for me, I'll watch the first round, and that's basically it. And then at practice, I focus on my weaknesses. If my guys show me something where I, you know, uh, if my wrestling game is, is off in a certain point, I've got some good wrestling uh, teammates, and so these guys are helping me with my ground game. And so for me, I want to be that person, and that's the way I do things. What made you change your mentality? Uh, to be honest, I sat back and I was watching literally round upon round upon round upon round of all these guys' fights. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, what, what's going on? Why am I studying him so hard? Is, is he um, superhuman? I mean, does he not have the ability to be taken down? Does he not have the, the ability to be knocked out? And so for me, it was kind of a mental uh, paradigm shift in my mind where I'm just like, man, uh, this doesn't need to happen. My focus needs to be on my weak areas becoming strong as opposed to looking at where this guy's good and where this guy's bad. Because like I said, man, from fight to fight, even if a guy just fought three, four months ago, he can evolve as a fighter. And if I'm just planning for fighter, you know, number or letter A, and this guy's already moved on down to his fighter D, I mean, I'm going to get my butt kicked. And so I've got to be ready and willing to adapt and change as things go on. Do you end up, in, and I guess this is kind of, I, I've talked to a lot of football players about this that, that make that transition in, in the combat sports. They'll say, you know what, I don't necessarily watch a lot of my opponents. He goes, but I watch my film, my own film all the time, whether it's, uh, from fights or it's in training as just a self-evaluation of looking at maybe there's a tendency I have of when I move my feet a certain way, I, I come with this combination and whatnot. Do you do a lot of that of just going back, looking at yourself and being critical of yourself of what you need to do better? Yeah, I do. Because actually that's, that's been where I found the benefit um, for me as a fighter, because I could find tells, I could find areas where you know, I was going to set up something specific and it became just clear as day that, man, I am really, really making this telegraphed. And, uh, you know, at the amateur level, just starting out, not many guys can pick up on those things real fast. Some do, but most don't. So I think I got away with a few things. But as, you know, I feel like my last five fights, um, I think I evolved because the truth is in the last year and a half, you know, I went five and one as a fighter as opposed to there for a while I had some losses and I wasn't really critiquing myself and I wasn't picking up on these things. So once I implemented that type of a mentality, I was seeing changes just basically in practice. I would see things. I'm like, wow, I need to fix that. And before you know it, in practice, things were landing that weren't landing before. And I was able to elude some punches and kicks where I wasn't before. 
And, of course, this fight coming up here November the 21st, Shamrock FC and Bush, uh, and Bush in Kansas City taking on James Evans. Uh, what do you know about your opponent that you've been able to kind of uh, learn about him? Uh, you know, he seems to be a nice guy. I, I talked to him just a few days ago here on Facebook. I wanted to confirm that, you know, he was ready to get in there and put on a good show. Um, you know, for me, I'm a very respectful style of fighter. I've only been angry in one fight, and it was actually against somebody who I fought on Shamrock FC. The guy would not touch gloves when the ref brought us together to bump gloves. And, you know, to me, that's a sign of disrespect. It's not something that's taught in a dojo. Um, so, you know, we let that guy have it in 23 seconds, and he tasted the hammer fist. And so this time, James, I respect him. Uh, if James is listening, James, I respect you, man, but you better bring your A game because the workhorse is coming to grind. Got to ask you about the nickname work, work Horse. Uh, obviously, I, I think we know what that means, but first off, how did you get the name? Who gave it to you? And, and kind of what's the story behind the nickname? You know, um, to be honest, I, I named myself initially as some stupid, stupid name called the Sleepwalker, and my wife made fun of me. And so, uh, you know, I realized real quick, I got to change this. This is stupid. Your name needs to come from people you train with. And so, uh, when I was at Crawford's, I would hear guys constantly talking about like, man, dude, you're like a workhorse. You just don't stop, you know? And then it kind of evolved and went on from there. I'm like, you know, I latched onto it and, uh, my daily life, I'm a stone Mason. I'm a stucco installer, concrete work. So it's a very, um, grunt like type of job. And so I'm constantly working. Now, my mentality has always been, you know, you may have more skill than I do and that's fine, but you will not outwork me. That's just the way I take pride in my ability to kind of dig down low. Now, I will say this because uh, you got me thinking about it, but when I lost to Zach Gorillas, that was a fight that I underestimated my opponent. I went in there, did not train very much the six weeks prior to that. I thought I was going to go in and walk all over the guy. We ended up going three rounds, and I lost by split decision because I did not live up to the name Workhorse. I saw areas where I could have capitalized, and I didn't because my cardio sucked. So this time around, it's going to be different. The last fight, I think I showed a little bit more. This fight, I plan to show more than I did last time. Is that the biggest lesson? Everything that's happened uh, in your MMA career is how you can never underestimate anybody you're stepping into the cage with? 100%. And the other lesson I learned is if you lack cardio, it'll make you a coward. I've seen strong men, myself included, fail in practice, in competition, in sparring, you know, in, in cage fights where – They've got the ability. It's just because they've lacked their cardio training. And I mean mixed martial arts cardio, not let's go jog on a treadmill cardio. Because of that, it's made us cowards. And so we get in compromising situations where normally if our cardio was on point, we would get out of them. We would be able to capitalize and move on in the fight. But when that cardio is not on point, you learn the hard way. And that's what I've had to do. And, of course, you're going to be taking on James Evans, November 21st, Shamrock FC Ambush. If you're not in the Kansas City area, you can watch this event via internet pay-per-view, shamrockfightingchampionships.com. Kevin, appreciate the time, and good luck in the fight, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me.